what's up coders welcome to one little coder in this python tutorial we're going to learn how to speed up our read csv process if we have a very large csv and then we want to convert that csv into a pandas data frame this video is going to teach you three different techniques that you can use to speed up your pandas read csv and we are going to deal with a csv file that is in gb so i'm going to show you how you can read that gb size like this is specifically 18 gb csv file we're going to learn how to read that and how can we improve the speed of the reading process using three different techniques that we're going to discuss in this video i've used a kaggle notebook for this video demonstration this kaggle notebook would be linked in the youtube description so you can just go to the youtube description and check out the kaggle notebook and also if you want to edit the kaggle notebook you can just copy and edit it so if this is something that you want to learn let's get started the first step i want to show you is i want to show you how big the data set is so i want to click the data tab on kaggle and you can see the data set that we are dealing with is the train file from the latest competition uh, ubiquant ubiquant market prediction where the training.cs file the training file itself is 18.5 gb file so we need a way to read the 18.5 gb file there are a lot of different methods to do this um, if you go to kaggle you could see that some people have converted into this into a pickle file and uploaded it some people converted this into a parquet file and then they've uploaded it but the technique that i'm going to show you is just in the same notebook how can you read it so the first method is converting the pandas like when you're going to read using panda csv converting the columns into a data type that is smaller in size so if you see this thing so the libraries that i'm using here is it's simple uh, numpy gc for clearing a garbage collection pandas data frame and we are going to use dask in the future i'm going to show you dask as well but other than that if you see the way i'm reading it i'm timing the cell okay so i've got multiple columns so how many columns we have got like if i go to the data tab i can show you that we have got we have got about um, we have got about one two three four columns and other than that we have got about like 304 columns so total totally in total we have got 304 columns the first four columns have a proper column name and the last 300 columns have got a name like you know f10 f0 f1 f2 like all these features that we have got so that is how the column is structured so now we are going to what we are going to do now is we are going to take the first column row id and convert into a string object then we are going to take time id and convert into int 32 and then we are going to take investment id convert that into uh, int 32 target we are going to convert that into float 32 and also rest of the features column we are going to convert into float 32 so the way i'm doing it is i'm taking the column name here like you can see the column name is being created here and for every name column name we are assigning the float 32 value so now after we create this is like a dictionary the d types dictionary after we create this d types dictionary while we are going to do pandas read underscore csv we can we can give the d type equals d types so whatever d types we have created here that can be passed on as an argument to the pandas read underscore csv function so this is the first option where you bring down the data type to a lower memory data type so by default you do not know what is a data type there so you try to give a data type that is smaller in size so that when you can actually when you when when your pandas is doing read underscore csv it doesn't take a lot of memory and time one one is time right of course time is the one thing but the other thing is also you need to have sufficient amount of memory because pandas is going to do everything in memory so which means you are not just saving time but you are also saving your memory and if you are doing it on kaggle you can actually literally see how uh, the ram shoots up when you are going to do this thing so pandas read underscore csv you're going to use d type argument and then you are manually passing the data types d type if you want to know what are the data types available numpy has got a wonderful documentation that would list you all the data types individual data types integer integer 16 integer 32 unsigned integer and all these kind of things so that if we see for this operation so we have got about uh, 3.1 million rows 
and we have got about like 300 columns and totally we have a, we have taken about seven minutes four seconds so this is what we have managed to do with using d types especially integer 32 integer 32 that's our approach one in approach two what we are going to do now is we are going to convert this integer 32 into an unsigned integer 8 so if you see our data set you can quickly show you show the data set you can see that our data set the the integers that we have got here or uh, it doesn't have any sign it's it's like from values greater than 0 so which means we can convert them into unsigned integers so that might that might also give us some memory savings so i'm converting the string into the type object and converting integer 30 to what we use here replacing that with unsigned integer 8 so now we have got object and unsigned integer 8 and then we are doing the same thing you're defining d types and you are adding more d types because you have got more columns from f0 to f to 300 and while you are going to do the read csv you're going to give the d types the same dictionary that you created here and then we are seeing it here so it's the same number of uh, rows and columns just a very minute difference um, it could be you know just purely by chance like machine re resource allocation as well so seven minutes four seconds and here it is seven minutes not not a very big difference but uh, but but you know you can you can you can basically understand that it has gained little bit in terms of the the advantage that you got the time advantage i don't have a way to show you the memory advantage maybe memory advantage might have a bigger impact but i'm not sure so so far we have used one argument which is d types and we played around with two different data types one is like instead of string we used object instead of in 32 we used int 8 and then we we tried different uh, the two different ways so we we have uh, done about seven minutes here so far so far we are in the range of seven minutes to read an 18.5 gb data set into a pandas data frame you can see that this is a pandas data frame that's why we managed to use train.shape which is a which is a pandas method so this method without this method it would have been it would have taken more than seven minutes um if you are doing this but first step we have managed to reduce the pandas read csv to seven minutes this is like a first achievement the next step is to use a library called dask so if you see here i'm using the library called dask from import dask.dataframe i'm reading dd so dask it's a very popular library that is almost equivalent to pandas but you you deal you use dask when you have got you know like very large data set and you can read more about dask i'm not here to explain you about dask but if i take the existing same thing like everything same like before and i just add dask like instead of doing pd dot read underscore is csv where pd is my alias for pandas i'm doing dd dot read underscore csv and I'm assigning it to an object called df underscore train. The thing that you have to remember is when you read using Dask, what you get is not a pandas data frame. You would get a Dask data frame. As you can see, you're getting a Dask data frame. That's what you're importing, right? You're importing a Dask data frame. So what I'm doing here now is I'm simply using the Dask data frames read underscore CSV function to read the CSV but after that i'm using the compute function to convert this dask data frame into a pandas data frame then 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 it is apples to apples comparison right otherwise it wouldn't make any sense to give you a perspective if i do not do this compute this entire operation did not even take a single second it was it was in um, I, it it was in in somewhere in you know microseconds or somewhere in that range so if i do not use compute right it, it it takes less than a second but in this case because because uh, because we are reading it you can see that i'm converting that into a pandas data frame so i think there is a mistake here i should have done pd dot uh, pd underscore df but you can you can actually see that it takes two minutes 59 seconds use read underscore csv from dask to read this csv and put it in a dask data frame and take the dask data frame here 
and then make use compute method to convert into a pandas data frame so this brought down our time from 7 minutes to 2 minutes 59 seconds which is approximately 3 minutes so we managed to reduce more than 50 percent you can say that you know more than 50 percent we gained more than 50 percent speed or 2x speed just simply using dask as a library we didn't do anything else at all let's just see one extension of dask which doesn't give a lot of improvement but i still wanted to highlight this extra feature so the first option we saw detect the second option we saw is to use dask and the, the third option is to use the argument called use calls so now what is use calls when you read a pandas when you use pandas read underscore csv to read a csv file like you can give d type you can also specify the list of columns that you want to read in my case i'm still sticking to the same 304 columns right i have got the four column names i've got the 300 column names i've appended everything so in my case i'm still sticking to the 304 column names so that i can show you the benchmark scores but in reality you may not need all the 300 columns so my call like you use use calls where you can define what are the columns that you want to read like like i said you just need to give the column names in a list and then you can pass that as an argument here in if you do that it will also reduce the amount of time that requires that is required to read a very large csv in this case like i said again it doesn't show a huge difference you can see the very similar timing right two minutes 59 seconds two minutes 57 seconds which could be you know due to chance as well like resource allocation but you you get the point you can actually improve the time your pandas or in this case again like it's a dask read underscore csv that it takes to read the csv you can reduce it by specifying the column names here so use calls is another important attribute or um, argument that you can use along with your read underscore csv to improve this time the performance and also to reduce the memory amount of memory that it might need to read a very large csv so that has taken to the end of this video so to quickly summarize we set out with a task or quest to read a very large csv which in this case is 18.5 gb csv the initial the usual thing that everybody does is just simply go to pandas read underscore csv no argument nothing you just read it that would have taken a lot of lot of lot of time but what we have done other in, like as, as a first method is specifying the data types with which we want to read these columns and we have given this data type as a d type argument then we have read the second thing is we managed to find the data types that have lesser memory than what we gave um, in the previous section like for example instead of using uh, in, in, int 32 we used un, unsigned integer eight. so we have we have done changes in the object type and the third method is to use dask but then use dask and then convert the dask data frame into a pandas data frame the function is same read underscore csv but when you have to convert the dask data frame into pandas data frame it might you might have to do compute uh, you use compute to change that but if you do not want a pandas data frame this is like your best option which would not uh, which would you know be like one second you have successfully read 18.5 gb data set and the final method is combining everything that we have learned so far d types dask and also to use another argument called use calls that can help us specify the list of columns for which we want to read a list of columns that we want to read along with this csv and we have finally hit the the latest benchmark or latest number which is 2 minutes 57 seconds is what we have ultimately taken to read a csv file of 18.5 gb into a pandas data frame i hope this video was helpful to you like i said this notebook kaggle notebook would be linked in the youtube description so you can just directly check it out and then you can also play around with it but if you have any suggestions if you, if i have left out any method that you usually use to read like for example rapid is 
um, from nvidia is something that a lot of people usually use when they've got an nvidia gpu so if any method like that if you feel that i have left out that you have found usually useful please let me know in the comment section otherwise i hope stay, you stay safe i hope you code well i hope your family stays safe thank you so much happy coding peace